Hi everyone, it's me Darlene. I actually have some stuff to tell you, so I'm so happy to have this chance to do a little chat video with you guys because I'm really too busy today to do something crafty. I've got so many crafty ideas that I want to put into play, but you know, whatever. I'm trying to balance life and uh, work. And work uh, is what I really want to do more than life. <laughs> okay, so once upon a time, actually almost three years ago, or maybe three years ago this month, hang on. It was actually just a little over three years ago. Hang on. Okay, this is August 21st, 2024. Three years ago on August 5th, 2021, I was right in the middle of trying to move from Maine to Mississippi. It was probably the most hectic and stressful year of my life. <laughs> I will never forget the stuff I went through I'm trying to get back to something else here so I can say everything the right way. Okay, what? Okay, I was wrong about something there. I was excited for no reason. <laughs> okay, three years ago, um, Derek and I, you know, were on the phone and texting often because of the move. Um, I didn't end up moving until uh, October 31st, but in August I was like, you know, I was just in the middle of decluttering and just so stressed out about everything. I don't remember exactly how it started, but Derek had uh, been doing some podcasting kind of stuff, and then he talked to me about he would like a channel. He had his channel set up, but he had not ever, like, recorded on it. And he said, uh, I think I'd like to do a, um, a vlog-style channel to talk about his life and stuff. And what he did was he said to me, tell your audience that if um, I get a thousand subscribers, I'll record my first video. You know, like when I get a thousand subscribers total, assuming that he would at some point, he would record a video. Now, usually people already have content on a channel and then they ask people to subscribe, but we did it the opposite way. He knew that I'd been talking about him at that point seven years. It's uh, 10 years for me. On YouTube this month so it's pretty exciting but I think my first video might have been in September I want to do an analytics video for you guys and bring you up to speed as to what the past 10 years have looked like okay so um, he um, said when I hit 1,000 subscribers I will record my first video and I said okay why don't we do that so I did a video much like I'm doing again right now telling you guys that he wanted to do some personal videos. Oh yeah, and he knew that my audience would be probably interested because I had been talking about him for seven years and he's Skylar's dad and of course you all knew Skylar. Those of you who have been with me since the beginning, you pretty much watched her grow up on camera. So, you know, it was a good idea and I said, yes, I'm sure I'll be able to bring you some subscribers. and. That night, he was like very close to a thousand, and uh, the next day, he was at a thousand subscribers, and he did his first video. And again, let me go back to that. That was August 5th, and it was just called Thank You, and it, in number one, number one video, his first video. And he ended up, you know, with over 7,000, 7,500 views on that. And um, I can't really remember what he talked about or said. I see he's wearing headphones and, you know, it's, um, it might be at his apartment with a backdrop, I think. And he did really well on that channel. And I did some videos with him that are hilarious. No, they were funny. And then he decided to do another podcast, the Rhythm Section podcast. And because, oh yeah, and then... He got so many watch hours quickly because he was pumping out some videos and everybody was watching them. So he was monetized, I believe, in like 20-something days. It didn't take him long at all. Because he was monetized and because he wanted to start the Rhythm Section podcast down the road a little bit, he decided that he would put that on that channel, that he would put the podcast videos on that channel because it was monetized. And then... Uh, the personal stuff started dropping out because it wasn't a good mix with the podcast stuff. So it really turned into um, a podcast channel. And he's always felt kind of bad about that because he misses 
the vlog style videos. And he has other channels too, The Real Hernando. And then I can't remember if there was another one that he might have said some personal things. I don't remember. But he wants to go back to having a channel for his personal life because he um, likes talking about things like his alcoholism and raising a teenage daughter as, you know, with sole custody of that and how, you know, just how things play out. Skylar's driving now with him, but, you know, she has her permit. You know, things have changed a lot in his life. He has a girlfriend, you know, stuff like that. He uh, told me just, I think, yesterday that he started another channel and that he just put a video up, I think, today. I don't know if it was today or yesterday. Uh, oh, three hours ago, so it's just, you know, very new. And, of course, I'm going to promote it for him. And watch his little video. It's only like six minutes plus, and he's going to explain to you, you know, what I just said about how his channel shifted, and so he wants a new channel, and the type of things he's going to talk about. He loves self-help stuff. So, you know, his alcoholism, he might talk about depression because he's been through that a lot um, and you know just struggles like he said the good the bad the ugly whatever in between and uh, so uh, I told him I'd send his cougars there <laughs> this is the comment I left him uh, I fucking love this for you and others will love it too your cougars will be here soon lol I already got a couple replies to that saying, uh, somebody said, here. <laughs> so we laugh because my audience's age is like 55 to 65. Like 95% of my audience or 90%, something like that. I do want to do some stats in a video um, are like age 55 and up. And he's 46, so I think um, my audience are cougars to him. And uh, you guys were always really cool uh, with going and watch his stuff. I hope you will subscribe to this channel, watch his first video. It's already got um, you know, 172 views. You know, that's how it starts, right? And as he puts more content up, I will definitely always promote this channel because I know so many of you, you know, are curious about his life. He's my son, and like I said, a lot of you heard me talk about him for. 10 years now and um and you know i'm sure i'll do some videos with him on that channel too and maybe he can get skylar involved sometimes so give him ideas give him hope encourage him to continue uploading and let's see what we can do with all this i did do some like i said on his other channel but then when it turned into mostly podcasts it just didn't seem to be a good match at that point so oh the new channel's uh, name is life with derek and uh, when we stopped doing videos together, I had a couple of funny ideas that I thought we should do together. So maybe we'll do that now. And uh, so I'm just really happy that he's encouraged to do this. And it encourages me, too, because I have my other channel, Growing Up Crazy, which is still monetized. It still gets enough views and, um, well, it's got enough subscribers. It gets enough watch time to stay monetized, and I really would like to put some more stuff there and on my ASMR channel, but do you see Do you see where this goes? It's like I just don't have enough time because I don't even have enough time to do what I want on this channel <laughs> that you're watching right now. But stuff like growing up crazy, I can do that here. I can talk about narcissism and, you know, different things. I talk about my alcoholism here and stuff like that. Uh, definitely ASMR, that's a whole different creature. That needs its own channel all the time. But maybe I'll put a few things on um, Growing Up Crazy too, just to make sure it stays monetized. All right, um, that's, I guess, it for that. Okay, so I'm going to link to his video on the end screen at the end of this video. You can click on that to get to his channel and to subscribe. I'll also have his channel in the description. And I'll put his uh, new channel image. I don't even know what it is. Oh, it's his bald head, blue background. He's like this. <laughs> I'll have that on my end screen too. I'll remove Skylar's channel, uh, which is not uh, a channel that we upload to anymore. I think the last one was uh, her coming out video. 
that she was gay three years ago because we were still in Maine when she did that. She had come to help me for a couple of weeks to help me get ready to move. That's, I just can't believe that was already three years ago. Anyway, um, you can go watch that video too if you'd like. <laughs> Again, she was uh, she's 16 now, so she was 13 there. Um, okay, what else do I want to tell you? Leave them a comment. You know, tell them whatever you want. If you're a cougar, say I'm one of your cougars. <laughs> I get a kick out of that. I don't think it matters to him much, but I get a kick out of it. Um, and again, give him some ideas of what he can talk about, what he should talk about. Now, the man can't cook. The man cannot cook. And I think it would be so funny if he would do some recipe videos of stuff that he's never made before, something very simple and watching him struggle with um, how do how how do I measure that? You know, stuff, something like that. I think it would be hilarious. And again, you know, the women in my age, I was going to say price range. No, no, no. I don't have a price range. <laughs> the women in my age range, I think we'd get a kick out of watching a man who can't cook, cook. <laughs> I, I want him to do that. I just do. Let's get him a thousand subscribers as quickly as we can. I don't think we'll get to a thousand within 24 hours like three years ago, but hey, you never know, right? We can hope. And then um, it'll encourage him to put more content up and get more watch time. Okay, my other thing um, is, yes, I have been not talking about carnivore because it has been almost eight years and it's just, you know, such a normal part of my life that I don't find anything interesting about it to talk about it. But again, I've been uh, renewed a little bit because finally my sister today started carnivore. I told her three days, do three days for me three days. She has a lot of issues that I know carnivore might be able to help her with. Helps a lot of people, but not everybody's the same. And I've been talking to her about it for eight years, and I've gotten her this close a few times, but then she backs out. So now it's to the point where she, like me and many of us, are just so fed up with doctors wanting to heal you or put a bandage on things like certain pain, certain ailments, this, that, it's a pill, have a pill, take a pill for this, take a pill for that. And she and I both are not pill takers, uh, you know, and she's really more uh, strict about it. She's willing to do whatever work it takes. If they say, you know, you need to eat this or you need to do this, or whatever, she'll do it, she'll do it. Um, so I've always said you would be the perfect, perfect experiment for carnivore because if she says she's doing something she's going to do it and uh, so she started today uh, I spent three hours on the phone with her yesterday just you know filling her in on how easy it is because she'll want to like keep track of everything you know it's like you know the whole thing about carnivore it's not just what you eat it's a whole mindset of just eat meat when you're hungry drink water when you're thirsty Eat as much as you want. If you're still hungry, eat more. If you're not hungry, don't eat. You know? And um, But it's hard for people like, oh, you know, I, I really should keep track of this or that. So I've, you know, talked to her a little bit about it, but I'm going to tell her more because she really is one that likes to, to write stuff down and to know. So I'm going to say, hey, keep track if you want. You know, just keep track of whatever. I, I just want her to try it. Oh, yeah, so I have been carnivore, like I said, for eight years. And since I've moved here and since my mother died, it's just been spot on, you know. Um, even when Joe was living here, you know, if a, a, a noodle fell out of the plate, I just wouldn't put the noodle in my mouth, you know. But, with, like, with my mother, I was cooking a lot for her. And just by habit, it's like, oh, and sometimes I'd, I'd realize before I swallowed anything, and I'd spit it out because it's like I just don't need to be doing that. It's just a habit. So I've been spot on, but the thing is, is where I start to do things that I know aren't the best for me is when I get back into dairy. If you've been here since eight years ago, you know I have a love-hate relationship with dairy. I spent four years at a complete plateau because I decided I felt good enough. I was still very, very heavy, uh, you know, I, I in, maybe in the mid to high 200s, and I was content. 
I was okay because I had lost a chunk. I had regained my joints, you know, no joint pain. I was able to use my joints and I can't believe how much I forgot as to how many joint pains and joint issues I had. I still have one knee that bothers me. So this is why I'm making this change again. So by telling my sister what to eat, um, instead of telling her, and I explained this to her, instead of telling her, like, when I started, everybody suggested a variety of meat so you don't get bored. I suggested to her, because I know she likes to test things, you're starting with beef and only beef, doesn't matter, but not processed beef, not, you know, beef hot dogs, steak, ground beef, um, that, that kind of thing, roasts, beef. Uh, and then I said, do that for at least three days and see how you feel, preferably a week. But then I said, you can start adding other carnivore things one at a time. I don't do well with chicken or turkey, poultry, I guess I don't. I, I get very congested and not only congested like like just in my nose, but it feels like my head is congested. So I don't do well. I, I do eat that stuff, but I always make sure it's a side dish and I don't do it often. Most of my days are beef. Pork I do a little bit better with, but beef. Beef is what I love and it's what is um, the best for me. It, I, I'm satisfied with beef and it's just so good and I just love it. I also like the ease of cooking and uh, the easiest thing in the world is the frozen hamburger patties. So I did that once for four months. That's all I ate were hamburger patties. Now, if you think that that's not good for you, Kelly Hogan, the woman that I learned about this from, she did like almost seven years of pretty much just hamburger patties. She would buy them at McDonald's a la carte. She would get just the patties. I think she said she would go every day and get eight patties. And that was what she would eat that day and, you know, other stuff if she was still hungry. And so uh, when I was telling my sister, I said, you know what, I'm going to do two weeks of beef and butter. Now, I did talk to her about butter too, um, but she, you know, would like to start with just mainly beef but cook in butter and, uh, and, and start like that and then see if she can add the butter. She's concerned about the tiny, tiny, tiny bit of milk in the butter. I'm not concerned about that, so I'm sticking to my butter. But I started um, with dairy off and on, you know, since my mother died, and I... Um, pork rinds, you know, it's like potato chips to me, only not really, I shouldn't say that, because potato chips, there was no end, and I had to have them in, in, in bulk, <laughs> lots and lots of chips, but then, you know, I make this spicy dip, and so the pork rinds with the dip, you know, sometimes, you know, you're just doing it again by habit, and so that has to go bye-bye, the cheese has to go bye-bye, uh, for now, doesn't mean forever, uh, I can do those things, but I rather keep pork rinds or something like, if there's a time that I, you know, like I used to go to Derek's to watch Survivor or something, and, you know, I don't mind now and then, I, but it's just, again, it's habit, and I don't like um, eating by habit. I want to eat when I'm hungry. So I told my sister, beef and butter for me for two weeks, and I went and bought two boxes of uh, the 32 patties, so 64 patties. That will not last me two weeks, uh, but... Um, and then I had two left over from the previous box, and I didn't pick up my 10-pound ground beef because um, the patties are so convenient. They're already frozen, and they're portioned into patties. And with the 10-pound thing, you know, I cut that into, like, five pieces. I have to put that in bags and put that in the freezer. I leave the wrapping on it. I don't want to do any work more than I have to just to get it in the freezer. And then when I take it out, it's you know, it takes a long time to thaw, and uh, with the patties, I don't have to thaw that. I can put them in the pan frozen on low. I can do it like before I'm hungry, and I know they're going to be cooked by the time I'm hungry. I did, though, a whole box in my air fryer, and I was doing like stacked in there, and I thought maybe that'll cook. And, you know, the first batch, I was able to turn them and then cook them. I ended up cooking that whole fucking box too much. The patties are way overcooked and hard as a rock. But one thing I did is I saved all the grease that each time I m made another batch, I poured the grease into a bowl. So I break up that grease. I add butter in a bowl and I heat the, the grease, the, the, the ground beef fat, call it grease, uh, in with butter. And then I 
put my hamburger patties in there and warm those up a little bit and then I just dip in the in the butter grease fat mixture and I eat that way so it made the hamburger patties not quite so dry and tough I don't care I'll eat them doesn't matter like I said I don't need a party in my mouth I just want to eat I just need the nourishment so I did that and then I had a little bit of steak left that I had just cooked half of so I did cook that so for right now I'm doing hamburger patties and a little bit of beef uh, steak I do have some two more steaks in the freezers I can eat six to eight patties a day and then I will eat uh, you know some of the steak if I'm still hungry um, and then butter I slacked on butter there was some days that I was only getting a half a stick in the morning and then I just wasn't thinking about it and I did that for a long time so now I'm putting two sticks of butter on my plate for every day. I'm trying to eat two sticks of butter just to restart, to reboot. And it's important for me to remember to eat butter right before I go to bed and to have butter cut and available for when I wake up to go to the bathroom. I need to eat butter. I don't care if it's soft room temperature. It's right there by my bed. I have a little cover and I eat butter anytime I wake up. That is all to help with cortisol levels and also thyroid. So, um, yeah, so I'm excited. My sister started carnivore. I hope, I hope it works for her. Now, my sister does not have to lose any weight. She's got the opposite. She cannot keep weight on. She's a stick. And she feels like everything is just, she's losing her muscle, everything. She just feels like she's going downhill. No matter what she eats, calorie-wise, she cannot gain weight. So, but she says, I can't do carnivore. Oh my God. She goes, you've lost so much. I can't lose. I said, no, no, no. Carnivore is not a weight loss thing. That's why I try to tell people. And this is a good way to give you an, oh, I didn't, I didn't see the red button. thought I was, I wasn't recording. Carnivore heals, heals your body. You don't lose weight to heal. You heal to lose weight if that's what your body needs. My weight is only a symptom of things going wrong, probably insulin resistant, probably have a fucked up thyroid. Cortisol levels, I can promise you, are, are screwing up and um, making me stay, you know, obese. All those years where some of those years I would try to do the, the right thing, the things that we've been taught all along. And with carnivore, I just let carnivore do its thing and weight started coming off. A four-year period where it didn't. Then I moved here and it started up again. Now I'm going on like maybe nine months with no action at all. And I sometimes the old me comes in and says, you know, you need to still lose weight. And I tell myself, I will when carnivore is ready to let me lose some more. That's all there is to it. So my body probably is just in a mode where uh, I, I've had a pretty stressful year, so the cortisol is probably fucked up. And I said, why don't I just go back to basics? And, well, my basics were, at the beginning were all kinds of meat. No, I like my new basics, beef and butter. That's it, beef and butter. And uh, let's see what happens. And I, I think I'm going to be very pleasantly surprised. And I know if I get off the dairy, that other knee, it does get to a point where it doesn't really hurt at all unless I strain it or something. But, you know, right now it's just like a constant little uh, inflamed, throbbing, kind of burning pain sensation knee. And I don't like it. So we're going to get rid of that, okay? And when it happens, I always say, I can't believe it really was the dairy. Because right now I don't believe it's the dairy doing that. But let's see if I get off any dairy. Um, mostly cheese. That's my jam. And, I, you know, I'm not doing processed anything right now. No processed sandwich meat, anything like that. Beef, butter, water. Okay. And I do still have my very weak coffee in the morning with a half a stick of butter in that. I melt the butter in um, this much milk in the bottom of the cup. And I might try to get rid of that milk, too. And just um, live with the little tiny bit of milk that's in the butter. I had given up coffee one time. Oh, my God, this is so but I went back to it. I just enjoy um, a hot cup of something in the morning when I'm doing my morning stuff on my blog. Now it could be just butter. I'm going to try it. I'll try just butter and water. No coffee. 
dash of extract. Vanilla is very good. Almond is very good. Just a dash. I, I do a pinhole, so just a drop. I put a pinhole through the little paper that covers the top, and um, then it doesn't like all pour out. <laughs> so, all right, you guys. So, oh, Derek, go go say hi to Derek on his new channel. I'm so happy for him that he wants to do this. You know, it's it's freeing to be able to talk to people, and I'm just really, really glad because he did miss it, and you know, he would tell me about it. I miss that, but I just don't want it on my channel, so good job, Derek. I love you so much, Derek, and I love you too, Skylar, if you're watching this, which you never are. <laughs> she wouldn't even watch videos that she was in. She's always too shy. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.